This is Professor Schmidt. Uh, today I want to talk to you a little bit about the politics of climate change and um, you know when we deal with coastal zone management and coastal policy international coastal issues and especially future um, discussions and concerns about um, the oceans and, and coastal areas climate change is kind of the um, sort of background to all of this. Um, most of the discussions are related to the warming of the oceans, are related to the melting of the ice caps, are related to uh, how uh, all of these things affect um, things like coral reefs. Um, we talk about uh, rising ocean levels and what impact those are likely to have on, on low-lying coastal areas around the world, on marshes and on um, estuaries and so on. Um, and we also talk about the impact of that on um, a whole variety of species um, because all of those uh, changes in, in the environment uh, affect uh, the ecosystems that, that we are interested in. We don't talk quite as often about the fact that there are scientists who work on this, scientists who uh, essentially specialize um, in the area of, of global warming and climate. But then on the other side, there are um, groups and individuals, organizations and others um, that uh, basically do not believe that the science is correct, believe that um, it, the whole discussion of uh, global warming and climate change is an ideological um, issue that is promoted by socialists and leftists, by the United Nations, um, and who essentially find it necessary to counterattack. Um, this week, uh, as I'm reporting this to you, there were some documents leaked um, that pertain to an organization that has been opposed to the idea of climate science um, saying that it is uh, fraud and that it is ideological. And those documents basically reveal that this organization, which is called the Heartland Institute and is uh, situated in Chicago, Illinois, um, is planning a major push to basically undermine the teaching of global warming in public schools um, and essentially to um, basically uh, change the discussion. There is some concern that this is similar to the attacks that have been occurring against the teaching of evolution in public schools, which has arisen in many places around the United States and has actually been uh, quite effective uh, in terms of um, affecting the curriculum in many places. Many textbooks had to be rewritten to basically um, call um, evolution a theory and to also teach um, a different vision of how um, humanity and life was created, which is uh, basically based on, um, on creationism. Um, and the uh, Heartland Institute's plans apparently um, would promote a curriculum that um, undermines the idea that fossil fuel emissions endanger the long-term uh, welfare of, of the planet. Um, the, one of the documents says, quote, uh, principals and teachers are heavily biased towards the alarmist perspective uh, on climate change. Um, so this is uh, something that you and I should at least talk about. Uh, it's very controversial. There is a, a, a great deal of um, hardcore political struggle going on um, between scientists and, and those who accept the findings of scientists uh, on global warming, the warming of the oceans and so on, and those who feel either legitimately feel that this is uh, hysteria and fraud and so on, or those who find climate change and global warming um, an inconvenience for um, their 
principal businesses and, and other activities because it would require uh, changing policies regarding emissions and so on. Um, the Heartland Institute so much as admitted that uh, documents, internal documents, uh, had been stolen from the Institute um, and it actually apologized uh, to donors to the Heartland Institute whose names became public um, as a result of these leaks. So, um, the, the documents were fairly specific. I haven't actually seen them, but they included details about the Heartland Institute's operations, salaries, personnel actions, uh, fundraisers uh, and, and other things like that. Um, and um, we can talk about this more. You can actually probably Google this if you want to read more about it. But it's, it's a very interesting thing because just this week um, Rick Santorum, uh, the former senator from Pennsylvania who is running for the Republican nomination to, uh, in the, uh, to become the candidate to, to run for president, um, said that, uh, in fact, President Obama um, had some sort of cult philosophy or something like that uh, that was not based on the Bible. And uh, when he was asked more questions about it, he specifically talked about climate change and the whole idea, you know, that there's global warming and so on, which he sees as a kind of ideology as opposed to as a real verified and, and scientific reality. So this is not, the Heartland Institute is not a, an outlier, a, a, you know, uh, is not off message from where a lot of, especially conservative Republicans, are on the issue of uh, climate, especially the issue of whether fossil fuels and human activities contribute to global warming and climate change. Um, so the Heartland Institute, of course, is going to try to um, <clears throat> find out who this was. Um, apparently what happened was someone called the Heartland Institute and pretended to be a member of the board of directors of the Heartland Institute and said that he um, was switching to a new email address and then the Heartland Institute, I guess, began to basically give him him or her access to, to all this information. Um, um, the Heartland Institute is a, it calls itself a libertarian organization. Uh, it has a lot of other public policy uh, interests and, and programs besides climate change. And it runs on a budget of, let, let's just call it roughly $8 million a year, which is it's not a whole lot, but it's still um, uh, substantial. So. Um, one of the things um, that the Heartland Institute is now struggling with is that it may have spent um, more than a half a million dollars on some uh, political activities, partisan political activities in Wisconsin, uh, which would be a violation of uh, federal nonprofit tax law. So besides the climate change issue, there are also some other pieces of information that have come out of this, uh, you know, particular, um, uh, it, it's not really a hack, but a uh, breach of, of, of documents, I guess. Um, the Heartland Institute has received money from some of the biggest corporations in the United States. Um, and, and some of those organizations have actually favored action to combat climate change. So it's a kind of a curious uh, situation here. Um, for example, uh, GlaxoSmithKline, which, as you know, is a big multinational drug company, uh, gave $50,000 in the past two years to um, the Heartland Institute and um, a spokeswoman for Glaxo said, quote, we absolutely do not endorse or support their views on the environment or climate change. Um, I guess Glaxo Klein Smith gave money uh, for a, some sort of medical newsletter that uh, the Heartland Institute puts out. Um, one of the other donors was Microsoft. Um, and a spokesperson for Microsoft said, quote, climate change is a serious issue that a man demands immediate uh, worldwide action. Um, so apparently Microsoft doesn't agree 
uh, either with the Heartland Institute's position on climate change. Um, Microsoft gave something like sixty thousand uh, dollars to the organization, but it was mostly, as is normally the case uh, with Microsoft, um, in in kind. In other words, free software as opposed to strictly cash. Um, one of the curious things is the, what was not found in the uh, files that were relieved, released and revealed, and that is that the major oil companies actually had not, uh, were, were not listed as having uh, donated. Um, oil was, however, represented in the Charles uh, Koch or Koch uh, Charitable Foundation, which uh, contributed um, something like $25,000 last year and $200,000 this year. And this organization belongs to uh, two brothers who have been big supporters of libertarian causes and of conservative uh, charities and so on. Um, Koch Industries or Coach Industries is one of the country's largest private companies and they, they are in the oil refining business so you get <laughs> some connection there. Um, actually, uh, Heartland has already uh, spent several millions of dollars in the past five years um, to undermine climate science um, and that money came from someone called anonymous donor. I find that to be as with other anonymous contribution um, to be disturbing. Uh, we don't know who anonymous donor is it could very well be that it is related to the uh, energy industry. We just don't know. But in any case, um, several millions of dollars spent on undermining climate science uh, uh, is, a, is pretty serious business. Um, and the group expects to spend about $1.6 million financing um, the um, non-governmental international P panel on climate change uh, which is an organization that publishes reports which attack climate science and holds very lavish lavish annual conferences uh, inviting uh, people uh, basically to attack uh, uh, climate science so the reason I wanted to share you with you this is that while scientists are working on finding more accurate measures uh, on climate change and global warming and so on, you also have a political battle going on essentially uh, between climate scientists and those who um, do not agree with climate science, who uh, object to it, who find global warming not to be uh, credible and believable, or who think of it as a threat to American businesses and competitiveness and and uh, putting a burden on, on companies and so on. Um, and I think it's important for you to understand that struggle that's going on. Uh, I imagine that most people who are taking classes on coastal policy um, can judge the validity of the arguments of climate science on the one hand and those who uh, are opposed to climate science on the other hand. But it is something that we have to deal with um, and it is um, bound to become more and more of a political factor um, as we elect um, individuals to Congress, for example, and perhaps elect a president who basically disagrees with the uh, findings of um, climate scientists uh, on global warming, sea level rises, and, and, and some of these other issues. Uh, and so it's something for us to keep our eye on and uh, I think to be interested in. Um, see you on the internet.